This should be interesting. Something a bit less scripted since the evening has not been kind to me. Uh, we're on the map hotspot. Mods domination. 8 to 10 matchmaking. Carrier in the game. Shokoku enemy side. Side panel mine. In, in the tier 10 Soviet battleship, the Kremlin. Seen a few small, small nerfs since we last visited her. Actually, no, uh, we last revisited her in a bit of a highlight reel thing. Just after the nerfs, but basically the nerfs are inconsequential, so more or less Kremlin is still Kremlin. And that's all you need to know about the gist of things. Moving on, we are spawning below A cap with our 457, so let's see what we can do. Z52 and Fletcher versus my Shimmy and Friesland. No super cruisers that can really pen my 60mm deck. And no Yamatos to pen my 32mm sections, so I am largely indestructible outside of making critical errors in terms of my own personal positional decision making. So just gonna push up. My Shimakaze is migrating over from the middle. So hopefully he will help us contest this. With our small force, we have a tier 8 radar, tier 8 fire support, another tier 9 battleship, and myself alongside the Shimakaze, of course. Just gonna push it's right in, not off. feeling it's pressured at all. Malfi pops up very briefly. He smokes immediately, which obscures his own vision. Do have to be careful of the Amalfi torpedoes, however. Still not spotted, which suggests that the DD is either still behind here or just maybe over here on this side. Maintaining my angle, don't want to take any punishment from the Vladivostok. He only has 406s, but they're still Russian guns, which means they still can punch quite hard. Battleship caliber is battleship caliber. No vision of anything really, unfortunately, so I'm just going to slowly slide along. The Alaska has pushed up somewhat. It's going to spray me once with his HE, but I am actually going to shatter most of his shells using the minimap here to help me position my AP shells. Do manage to get a lock on salvo. You can see that nice, tight Russian dispersion, but looks like the shells are too high or in the wrong section of his ship. We dodge the Amalfi torpedoes. His smoke fades, and I assume his radar forces my shimmy from the tap. Unfortunately, my Charles Martel does foolishly take a torpedo. So I'm just going to position my bow into the cap, start absorbing fire, and pressuring them to contest me. So we can at least see something. Based on the fact I'm undetected, looks like there's absolutely nothing here, so Shimakaze guy is being fairly conservative for pretty much no reason. Probably the destroyer fucked off to the border. Not exactly something I advise, but it is something people like to do. Alaska radars, and we do catch the Z-52, thanks to the spotting of Bashimikaze, who likewise has gone to the border. But that's fine, I'm in the cap. No one's able to shoot me at this time and moment. The only one who can really reset me here is Vladivostok, should he choose to push forward and just slam AP shells into my nose to reset me. Which I will be more than fine with. Now you can see here I can bring my third gun to bear, which means if the Alaska does pop, he'll actually be able to pen me quite heavily. Based on my angle, if I can use all three rifles, then I'm within American auto bounce angles for his improved penetration angle AP. Iowa has pushed quite far at this point, so as a result, I can push forward a little bit and pressure this Alaska. Now he has 27mm plate. But that's not going to stop my 457mm shells from penning him all over, as you see from that hefty 23,000 damage. Slap, going to push forward just slightly. Now remember, I do need to maintain my angle against the Flood of Allstock, so I can't push all the way in. 
without exposing my broadside to the Alaska unnecessarily. You can see here I'm not quite angled enough to bounce his shells. I'm gonna shove my nose guns into his nose. Continuing to get just go for raw pen damage. Alaska can punish me back here but six guns versus nine. My teammates have yet to realize that they should probably just push in and support me. He shoots my nose in order to guarantee himself some penetration damage. Fair enough. Iowa pushing back. He's pushing around the corner. Don't want to go for his belt here, just want to go for his nose again. Just going to fire my front two rifles. Break a turret, then break him. And then we save our last turret for the Amalfi, who has pushed back. Now the Amalfi, I don't really care about as much in terms of uh, angling, so I am going to adjust my angle for the Vladivostok, which we're going to push down and through. And with my own personal actions here, we have secured the cap and eliminated more or less the Alaska, who was forced to reverse away and ended up taking some Shimakasi torpedoes. Malfi pops his smoke, and Zed keeps me spotted, but he does take a Citadel from being full broadside and ends up going down. This one I'm going to turn through, away from the carrier Shokaku planes, away from that GK in the north, and just pass through the cap. Now if the Vladivostok sees this opportunity, he might accelerate into... Oh, I sector a bit incorrectly there. He might accelerate in there to attempt to intercept me, but I reckon he probably just reversed all the way out. Turning my gun to the other cap. Can't shoot the GK yet. Looks like the Izumo is turning out just slightly. So I'm going to aim above, assume he completes his turn, fire my nine rifles. And then adjust my own angle to make sure I don't take any retaliatory, retaliatory pen damage. As you can see, at greater ranges, the dispersion is worse, but the penetration power of the Kremlin, Kremlin's 457s is still obviously there. This broadside being harassed by my Shokaku, or my Saipan, sorry, does not appear to have made any further course deviations. So we're just going to shove shells into him as anticipated. The Vladivostok did reverse off. Not much tighter saddle this time. I've closed the range somewhat. This time double citadel into the Izumo. Again, causing some problems here. I'm gonna kill that GK plane. This time going for just pen damage, but we do need to address the issue of the GK now. I'm going to attempt to turn out and away, rather than handshaking the nose in trade, I'm just going to try and kite away and hope that this Ismo at further ranges is not able to shoot me. Now he has a, all guns forward, this is going to hurt, yep, hits me for quite devastating 40k strike, 34,000 with looks like the rear two rifles, and further damage uh, with his first few volleys. I'm going to turn away. Respond in kind with my own 24,000 salvo. At this point I'm angled against the GK, pop my heal. There's only a Venezia there, which will eventually kill me, but I need to angle against the immediately close threats there. I take my GK punishment, he was unable to fully kill me. So that means I'm going to pick up this Ismo kill more than likely, and then I'll turn my sights back to the GK, as you saw there. He takes quite a bit of pen damage from me. Make sure I angle fully against that Ismo salvo. My shells do find the range and finish him off. Take an additional 1,000. GK is now on the in the pursuit, but I have turned away at this point, and now he's chasing into my whole team, all these torpedoes, he's giving broadside in order to bring his guns to bear, and I can punish him back. Make up for that 50,000 salvo I just took. Some of my shells splash into the water, but 16,000 is just fine by me. Pretty much immune to the Shokaku here. Looks like he's not paying attention to me anymore, so I'm going to risk turning back in to pursue. Now if he's paying attention, he can actually attempt to punish me with just his rear guns, aiming high, assuming he's continuing to turn with the front two. And then I notice he's not really turning the way I thought he would as in north, up like that, with my front two guns, so I correct my aim slightly with my rear gun. Slide behind this island, nothing else is spotting me. Fall into cover. And I'm just going to wait for my reload, and on my next reload, he's going to be 100% dead. 
And this should be our fourth kill here. My allies do not quite manage to finish him, but my shells are in the air. But the Salem is close enough that his shells arrive first with his superior 5.5 second reload. Z52 off on the border, utterly worthless. He took his cap contesting destroyer to a zone preserved for people who don't understand what's going on. Now you can flank with a destroyer, don't get me wrong, but there's a time and a place for it, and certainly the beginning of the match is not any of those things. Looks like we're going to end up with a rather conservative 160,000 damage game, which is just about average performance for the Kremlin, which kind of goes to show just what kind of monster she is. Fully expecting this to be a very unimpressive game, most of my damage is battleship damage. Sadly, not a lot of cruisers for us to shoot at. My short range here limiting me from engaging the Shokaku. A lot of us are reversing away from the Ismo who's going to beach. If he continues reversing far enough, maybe I'll be able to get some shots off on him, but Musashi will definitely have first dibs in terms of getting an angle on the reversing Ismo. Or reversing Vladivostok, rather. Since this Vladi is actually beached, or the Ismo is beached, I think the Vladivostok should just accelerate and attempt to make a play onto him as we take a ranging shot on this Z-52. You can see here, at range, my shells still maintain a fair amount of their velocity, and we actually get a decent straddle strike for 2,900 onto that fully at range Z-52. Vladivostok burns down the Ismo either because he switched to HE, or because his secondaries lit a fire. I don't really care which one. And I assume he's going to full stop or plunge into the cap. Either is fine can't engage any other targets, just waiting for our points to tick out. Looks like he pushed forward, but again, I don't have great angle on him here, even if I slow down and attempt to reverse. Unless he pushes all the way through without angling, I'm not going to be able to do anything. He did pop a heal, however. Which means there might be some merit for just sitting here and waiting. It's going to tick up to just over 10,000. My FTG is rushing him down which will probably prompt him to stop moving forward. And as you can see, he's slowing down quite a bit. Now, as the FTG crosses the corner, the Vladivostok will actually have an opportunity to punish him quite hard. 6k for the FTG. Vladivostok, unfortunately, returns only at about 10k. Looks like he's forward enough now for me to hit, but he's angled. Enemies dispatch the Shokaku, so if I want to get any extra shots in, gotta do them now. I aim with the minimap, only get 3k with 3 shell hits, but it's fine, it's still 3k extra. He's bow in, he has fire ticking. I guess he ran out of damage control, so otherwise Russian damage control would definitely prompt him to do something. He fires into the FDG, but looks like he fired too forward into the angled bow. And the shells either miss or bounce. And that'll wrap up this match. Very relaxed, kind of stompy game to be quite frank. Not exactly any world-ending carry performance here in terms of decision making. We just went into the cap when we realized that there wasn't really a threat to us. And then we carefully dispatched the Alaska with our 457s. And then we carefully took the cap and then killed some battleships in the center. Team score-wise, only 1800 as you can see, mainly battleship damage as I mentioned, and I am top tier, but 171,000 damage over 56 shells, 4 citadels, 3 kills, 2 planes shot down, 1 cap, 1 capture, and 11 target hits. Now running back into the queue, hopefully we can get something a little more engaging for you guys. Now the Kremlin, of course, uh, we've featured her before, the Soviet tech tree battleship, and hopefully, for now at least, the only... Soviet battleship. The shelved, or hopefully shelved, Slava is not exactly what I'd call a potentially healthy contributor to the health of the game, so I would honestly prefer she stay in developmental limbo for probably until the end of time, if I'm being frank.
クリーブランド兄貴の妹モントピリオ行くぞそう、next match loads up。again we're top tier in a eight to ten match up。so we have our work cut out for us。respawning below at a cap along with an octavoy and not much else really。So we will see what we can get done. In this case here, because we're relatively alone, just gonna push casually forward. And take our time with our engagement. Not much to say about matchmaker. 8 to 10. Again, there's a carrier. There's a graph zeppelin on the enemy team. I can know this without even looking and tabbing because of the unique profile, or rather than unique, I should say distinct profile of the graph zeppelin. As I put away what I was doing, which is why I wasn't talking quite as much. I glide past this rock from my spawn position. Flanked by a Seattle. Looks like I'm going to be the primary battleship threat here. Graf Zeppelin scouting with his torpedo bombers. Georgia pops into range. Max range, but remember my penetration power is good even if my dispersion is not perfect. Sectoring for the Graf Zeppelin, who is foolishly going for me, perhaps mistaking me for a Sovetsky Soyuz, or perhaps mistaking this Seattle for... I have no idea what you would even mistake a Seattle for. A Helena, perhaps? Anyhow, my shells go wide on the Georgia, but my AA helps contribute to the death of nine Graf Zeppelin torpedo bombers, which he will be feeling in the future. Not exactly something you want to be doing, especially when you're bottom tier. Now Georgia pushing in and up. Looks like he's about to commit to a turn. Now he's at Georgia, so remember I have to give quite a bit of lead. We'll find out soon if it was enough. He's running his speed boost, as you can see from his black smoke, but exposing his broadside does allow me to deliver a punishing 16,000 strike. Now no citadel damage, which is unfortunate, so he will be able to heal back the majority of that as the Graf Zeppelin brings her APDBs. Now the APDBs have a circular ellipse, so there's nothing I can really do about that. If they hit me, they hit me, and if this Baltimore stays broadside like that, he's going to get punished. He hits me for 2300, so that's, what, two pens? 7000 by 0.33 twice. One shell hits the Baltimore at range. Remember, my dispersion is not fantastic. There's an enemy Chapayev who's foolishly found himself in that corner, but I'm going to ignore him because I'm not going to bring my tier 10 battleship all the way into that corner just to chase a Chapayev who happens to be out of position. However, there is a Yutlin in the middle, which I'm completely blind to, so I do have to play with a bit of care. Georgia continuing to shell me. Someone lands a pretty meaty penetration. Don't think I'm actually going to be able to hit that, based on his speed. By the time the shells get to him, even though we're quite close when I fired those shells, he'll have passed by thanks to his speed boost. Smoke screen gives me the approximate location. Gonna angle against that Yamato's ranging salvo. Take one on the stern deck, but my stern deck is this section here is not yet at the 32 millimeter section, so not vulnerable yet. Taking some fire from the Kitakazi due to my gun bloom. Remember again, we have not that much information about where the destroyers are. We know where the Kitakazi is now, but other than that, not too much else to say. And there is Missouri in the area, and this is being capped, so I can assume that, say quite safely, that the Utland is there. With that information, I'm just going to switch to high explosive. Kind of wish I had expert loader here in this build, but you can't always get what you want. Seattle radaring down here for the Chabayev, which I'm quite okay with. Now Kremlin HE, they haven't used it yet. 6500, not exactly impressive, especially for 457s. But since my kid is moving up in, in toward the cap, and he's definitely outgunned by the Kitakaze. I'm going to offer him what support I can, but it's just driving up toward the cap. Yutlin does become revealed. 
probably by Gunbloom. He's probably firing on the Yugamo, who seems to be dodging most of the shells, if that is the case. Kitakazi reveals his relative position. Now, I don't want to get too close, but I do want to get close enough to support the kid if he pops out. Planes do spot me, so he'll know I'm close by now. Kid Torps gliding through the smoke. And I'm giving a fair bit of broadside to the Yamato, so I'm going to correct my angle while I remain quite dark. The Kremlin actually has a fairly average 13.4 detection radius in spite of her enormous bulk. Kid is still in the cap, based on the fact that it's not ticking. Or the Kitakazi, rather. Can't really miss at this range. 5k with HE shells should help equalize the matchup for the kid. Or, and at this range, I probably cannot eat any further torpedoes based on the launch angles of the Kitakazi, which are does require to expose quite a bit of broadside. No one's shooting at the bloody Kitakazi for some reason. Please finish him. I really don't want to expend this salvo into him, but I will if I have to. Yamato continuing to shell me. I'm gonna predict the turns and switch back to armor piercing. I am exposing a fair bit of broadside, my shells go wide, and no one shot at the Kitakazi. Targeted by 5 at this point, my angle's not great, Yamato can punish me quite easily. But at least the Kitakazi is pretty much crippled from any open water maneuvers at this point. Punishes me for an unimpressive 4000, planes spot the Kitakazi, slowing down. I'm gonna take that pop shot and see if I can take it. I aimed just ahead of him because I anticipate he was slowing down in order to get into the smoke. However, my shells go wide. Utland does get spotted. I'm inside the Utland's torpedo range, so I do have to be careful. Angled against the Yamato, relatively speaking, at this point. But he still does punch me in the side for 1,200. Baltimore doing Baltimore things. He's going to turn out, firing my two front guns at him. And gonna adjust my angle for the Yamato. Kill the Baltimore and get an overpen into the Yamato superstructure. Yutlin pops up, he's at 9.8. Yamato only gets 1400 this time on an overpenning strike into my side armor as I bounce the majority of his shells off my belt armor. Gonna use my Russian dispersion to just shoot AP into his superstructure. It is preferable to use AP, even at close ranges, if you can get away with it. He, however, has 32mm overmatch, but because he's shooting from my belt rather than my nose, he's only getting rather manageable salvos. Now, the Yutlin was much closer when he initially launched these, so I'm gonna take what well, looks like three torpedoes at this point. And, oh, just kidding. Based Because we knew the minimum time when we had to start reversing because he was spotted earlier we knew we were at the edge of his 10 kilometer torpedo range we are able to dodge out and range them out another 6k into the yamato superstructure in exchange she glances shells off my side for another 5k we are definitely losing this trade very slowly but i cannot push in and threaten him in any meaningful way and i'm not getting the support fire i need from my allies kind of need these guys to push in My kicking and screaming at my allies does push me away. I'm gonna get sh rained and shelled on by the uh, buffalo, but I do damage the Georgia over there. At this point, the only way to really dissuade him, although I am outlasting the Yamato because he is finally getting focused down by my allies, is to deal with this buffalo, pop, a, pop my damage control for that one fire immediately because I have that Russian damage control, so I'm not concerned about getting it taxed too much. Worst case, like this one, I will just allow it to tick. Oh, my angle has been kind of rendered bad or poor by my efforts to put guns onto the buffalo. Haven't been paying attention to the Yamato. Another Georgia on my side now, which is going to cause some problems, so I'm going to expend my next salvo onto the Yamato, hopefully before he fires, looks like his guns are elsewhere. Eight, he's reversing, so aiming into the superstructure over there, adjusting my angle for that Georgia up to the north. Unfortunately, only one pen, but this Missouri, who's 
diving through, we'll probably dispatch him, I would imagine. He's the Yamato's most pressing concern, certainly, so... I would imagine, at the very worst, the Yamato shoots him and not me. That Georgia that was broadside to us earlier, now pushing in, he's not facing us. Let us put shells into his superstructure. His secondaries do light fire onto me annoyingly enough, but at the very least, we dispatch him. Now, I am using my damage controls fairly aggressively because I still have a fair stack of them and I only have one heal left, so I wanted to preserve my actual health. I was turning broadside here, he's about to take some torps too. Hopefully, he doesn't angle too much against me, but at this point, I am targeted by the bulk of the enemy forces up here and any cruisers over here. No point damage controlling that last fire. Looks like an Italian pasta boat is damaging me over here. His secondaries start up on me. I'm gonna pop my real heal. I still have Kuznet self to fall back on. You see here. I'm taking a lot more attention in this game because I have a lot less uh, allies around to absorb fire in this case. Adjusting my angle so I'm angled against both the Iowa and the Georgia. Takes my back guns offline, but that's fine. Now he's quite angled, but as long as I don't aim for anything too ambitious, I can still get decent pen damage into his nose. Need to adjust my angle for the Iowa. Don't want to angle completely per se, because this is gonna hurt if I do. That pops my Kuznetsov, gives me another heal. Hopefully buys me enough time to bring my turrets to bear onto this Georgia, which is attempting a drive-by. His engine's broken, however, but that might actually rule in his favor. I think he's unangled enough. This is way too angled though, so I'm gonna have to wait. Unfortunately, waiting until the very last second to fire my rear gun because he was too angled, so I wasn't going to be able to access his cit citadel. So I wait until the very last second for him to glide a little further forward with his dead momentum. And I do fire off the shells into the citadel, and hopefully, we'll have gained enough of an advantage at this point for the rest of my allies to clean this one up. 3.9 million potential damage in this case. We did get dispatched, however, but we did burn through every last heal and Kuznetsov and almost all of our damage controls. So, we did expend quite an effort absorbing the pressure of their push at this middle cap. We took a lot of damage from the Yamato from a bit of excessive showing of sides, so we could definitely have done a better job of angling there and got even tankier. Probably broken the 4 million potential quite easily. But, that we'll have to do for now. Looks like we've acquitted ourselves decently well, nevertheless. We'll let this play out, but at this point you can see like see that our team has had fairly decent map control for quite a while now. It's just a matter of cleaning it up. The enemy was attempting to, of course, alleviate that pressure at Yamato sat inside of our B-cap that we controlled for quite a bit, blocking the points from ticking. I'll start firing into the Buffalo. Unfortunately, the Buffalo is an American heavy cruiser at high tier, which means he has 27mm extremities, which bounce his AP. His secondaries, however, are railing onto the Buffalo. Doesn't look like he has IFHE, however, so most of them cannot penetrate him. Lexington struggling to put planes onto these two targets. Two American ships stacked together at tier 9 are quite a formidable force for a tier 8 carrier of any type to strike. Buffalo gliding onto the side of the Elsass, probably not what you want to do. If his guns are loaded and he had pre-turned them, he could actually flap this guy. Unfortunately, as you can see, he had his guns just kind of tracking very lazily. So they're going to miss, however, my Ognavoy is probably going to put some of his stock torpedoes. You can see he only has the triple launchers, so that means he hasn't upgraded to the quads. Into the buffalo at short range, allowing him to get dispatched fairly easily. Iowa reversing away from the Alsace, but the Alsace is extremely fast for a tier 9. Short of the Georgia, she is the fastest ship, especially while she's speed boosted at tier 9, in terms of tier 9 battleships. 
残り5分だ指揮官姉貴が見てるかもしれない They dispatched the Iowa, that's going to put us up to about 940 points. There you have it, 932 after he dies. Kid is stalking a Brindisi, and these, this conqueror back here doing conqueror things, just lazing about. And I said Lexington just now, but I believe it's actually a Graf Zeppelin, so my apologies there for the mistake. Conqueror exchanging fire with the Seattle at range. Looks like he's actually using armor piercing, but you can see that Conqueror has fairly poor dispersion. Rendizzi gets dispatched by what looked to be some battleship salvos, and that wraps up the game. This time, a bit more thorough of a demonstration of just how incredibly tanky and durable the Kremlin is, as well as her extreme penetration power even at range. Only 122,000 damage this time, so below the average by a little bit. Unfortunately, a lot less shells landed, so I didn't survive the whole match, so obviously that does happen. 14 planes shot down, however. 4 citadels, 3 kills, 2 in caps, and assisted capture this time. Just the last few seconds on B cap and a couple of secondary hits. Team score wise, as a result of my dying early, tanking is not well rewarded in this game, so that bottom tier Ognoboy, which managed to score a almost half health buffalo kill, did claw his way to the top, and as did the kid who killed or contributed to damage on several higher tier targets, but I am the highest tier 10 after that, but not in that significant drop off range. Anyhow, if you go to potential damage, we have that 5k HE salvo onto that Kitakaze, but other than that, mostly armor piercing. The 457 Swift Overmatch mean that you almost never have to reach for the HE, even at close ranges, thanks to that Russian dispersion pattern. You can just keep firing armor piercing into superstructure of enemy battleships, and you'll do just fine. Because you can see, most of my damage are from those various Georges who were kind of fooling about in front of me. But this, these seven shells for 16,000 on the Yamato here it is all mostly superstructure pens, so there is something to be said about the Kremlin's ability to put pinpoint shells in close range with her Russian dispersion. Anyhow, before we go ahead and wrap up this commentary, of course, premium consumables, upgrade wise, very standard. Main armaments, honestly, the Russian turrets are so tanky that you could probably get away with running auxiliary armaments if you wanted to just bolster the strength of your AA, particularly in a longer game with a midway, for example, which does a lot of high explosive damage, which can, which can damage AA mounts, might be more useful. And then tankiness, accuracy, tankiness again, concealment, and reload on the main battery, the bread and butter of the ship, very straightforward. Captain skill-wise, I'm using Kuznetsov, who is extremely broken. If you, have, if you have the spare coal for him, if you don't have him, I highly recommend getting him if you do plan on playing the Russian battleships. Uh, it's really a night and day experience playing him, playing Russian battleships with Kuznetsov and playing Russian battleships without. It really adds an extra tankiness factor. Uh, the main talent, of course, is the will to victory. Over here, of course, it activates when you drop below 10% of health, which for the Kremlin is just about 10k. Uh, what happens is that you get a heal when it pops off and it instantly damage controls and gives you a damage control that ticks over and doesn't allow you to or removes all the floods and fires on you and this combined of course with the russian damage control and your own other natural heal means that they're extremely difficult to put down Captain build wise, priority target into adrenaline rush, into superintendent, into fire prevention, into concealment expert, into jack of all trades. It's very standard, and then you have three points. I choose I choose to put them into basics of survivability, but there are instances where expert marksman could be useful. So it could be possible that you take, or expert loader could be useful rather. You remove basics of survivability, and then you take expert marksman plus expert loader. But because the natural church reverse of the Kremlin is already so fast. I feel like taking basics here is just fine, and since the AP, or rather the Russian dispersion, is so accurate, even if you have to take your first salvo onto a thinly armored target such as the Smolensk or Kremlin, 
or Smolensk or Destroyer with AP, you land so many shells if you aim properly that it doesn't really matter even if you didn't have high explosive loaded. Anyhow, that was two quick Kremlin games, kind of showing off just how incredibly broken she is. Definitely not even her full potential. They weren't the most exciting of games, but they were definitely demonstrative of some of the things you can do. Just need a little bit of control with the Kremlin, and you can go a long way. My angling wasn't even perfect, nor was my marksmanship over the course of those two games, and I still put out a tremendous amount of impact. Anyhow, that'll wrap up this Kremlin commentary follow-up for now. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all later. Cheers.